I've always been quite a independent person, be it physically, mentally. I don't want to become dependent on a little pill that tells me I'm going to be all right, especially when I've got the capacity to do something about it. You've got diabetes, accept it, take these pills and that's it. You are treated as that's how it's going to be. We've been through the cancer and that was just horrendous for the whole family. The biggest fear of all is the cancer coming back. If you know what the issue is, you can deal with it. I'm 24 stone. I've got type 2 diabetes. I've got three kids. To see these guys see me set an example of a healthy lifestyle blows my mind. If I can do that for them, it's fantastic. When we're unwell, we can fear the future. What we really need is hope, a feeling of expectation that something can happen, something can change. A few years ago, my brother Ian and I realised that our dad was in very poor health. He had advanced type 2 diabetes with many serious secondary complications. He didn't know it then, but he also had kidney cancer. We were told his options were limited. But in spite of all this, Ian and I set out to fix Dad. Jeff, 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 Jeff. We questioned everything about his health and the way he was living. Are not allowed to film this bit? <laughs> well, no, we are, no, that's the whole point. We argued and fought at every turn. That is purely my own choice. I don't have to do well, that. We know that. <laughs> we pushed our relationship to its limits. You know what, no, You've got to get a grip. Let me tell you, I've had too much of this from you. But with focus on his diet and lifestyle, we cracked it. In less than a year, he was in remission from diabetes and cancer. He cycled the massive 100-mile challenge of Ride London when he thought he never could. <laughs> Doctors agreed if we hadn't taken action when we did, Dad would soon have died. But he'd been just one step away from a massive heart attack. Many people were inspired by what we had done as a family. So we teamed up with the organisers of Ride London to see if we could help four other families. Thousands applied for the fixing challenge. Four were chosen. And for Cherry Kelly, Adrian Hyam, Maureen Weber, and Craig Russell, the next six months will be tough. They'll be overhauling their diets, fixing their lifestyles, and refocusing their priorities. We fixed Dad as a family. Can these four people do the same with the help of the people around them? Are you going to work? Yes. Oh. Uh, Night shifts. Wonderful. Great. Hello. As a custody officer, Hello. Cherry faces a lot of stress in her job. Um, brother and father are no longer suitable to act as appropriate adults. Not only are her sleep patterns all over the place, but she faces volatile situations to the detriment of her health. You end up being awake for 24 hours, and it's it's just the most horrendous thing in the world. Three o'clock in the morning, I could quite happily go anywhere and, and, and vomit, because you just feel so poorly. Do you want to speak to the sister? Do you know what that one said to you? Yeah. You'll fuck yourself and... OK. Do you want to speak to the solicitor? Yeah. yeah. People, they say the most hideous things. How does your husband sleep with you? I'm pleased I haven't got children, because some of the things that people say they're going to do to my children, it's just completely unbelievable. Cherry's mum suffers with type 2 diabetes, and a few years ago, her dad suffered a stroke. Now, struggling to take care of her own health, she's become fearful for the future. Um, I'm five foot seven, and I'm 15 and a half stone. Uh, I'll be 44 in, in January. And I am active. I do um, some exercise and all the rest of it, but I need a long-term fix. I suspect with my weight, with my mum, there's a very good chance that I could be pre-diabetic anyway. Unless I do something, it's inevitable. Come on, sell a bucket. <laughs> Whilst Cherry fears the condition, Antiques Dealer AD already has type 2 diabetes. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Lovely. AD put on significant weight 
after his partner died in a tragic accident in 2003. We had two children. They lost their mum when they were six months and two. I couldn't believe that I had been left. I sort of virtually gave up. I gave up work because I thought I'd just got to look after my boys. And then slowly and surely, I was piling on the weight because I was feeling sorry for myself. With his boys in mind, AD wants to reverse his condition before it's too late. I'm 30 odd stone and I find it difficult to do anything. The whole of my family have had diabetes. My nan and my uncle John are no longer with us because of it. Maureen's family has a history of cancer. And since suffering breast cancer herself in recent years, she's battled through chemotherapy. I think health-wise, I'm just carrying too much weight, and that is mostly out of the back of the cancer. Since undergoing this aggressive treatment, Maureen has suffered with low energy and a real fear of the cancer coming back. I want to be able to feel confident in myself again um, and feel, feel good about myself. There you go, see? Cuisine. Craig has a busy life with three children. And one of his motivations for becoming healthier is to set an example for them. But he knows he first has to overcome some serious health concerns. I'm 24 stone. I'm losing feeling in my feet. I've got type 2 diabetes. Um, and I'm just not in a good way. So I really need fixing. In the last few years, Craig has struggled to find motivation having also suffered with mood swings and anxiety for some time. Are you in a strap? Yeah, I am. I'm really pissy. <laughs> Why are you in a strap? Pissed off. I've been horrible this morning. Um, stresses of life, um, all sorts of stuff going on. The reason why I applied was because I've got to do something about my weight and about the diabetes. But having struggled with his weight his whole life, Craig knows the size of the challenge ahead. I was put on a diet at the age of three. And then again, I was put on a diet at the age of 12. And it's never worked. They've never dug deeper. And I think that's the key to it. I think, uh, you know, I don't even know myself. It's just really at a point where, you know, something's drastically got to change. You know, and that was my motivation. It was the target of doing the 100. And it was like, well, if your dad can do it, then your dad's inspired me. All our fixies have struggled to maintain diets in the past. And they want to lose weight to safely ride that 100 miles. But first, they need to understand their state of health right now. He's not fixed. So we're taking them to see Professor Roy Taylor in Newcastle to get a clearer picture. Well, we're here. We arrived. Craig wants his eldest son to be part of the experience and has brought him along to film part of the day. This is me at Newcastle University going in to see Roy Taylor. <sighs> Scary stuff. Hurry up. Scary stuff. Go on, then. Come on, then. The ride is just the start of a massive journey for me. Hopefully, if I change my lifestyle, and people see that I can change my lifestyle, then others will follow. Uh, we thought we'd, that we'd make a bit of a, a day of it, bearing in mind um, it's going to be about a four hour journey for us. When I sort of say, I'm 15 and a half stone, no, you're not. No, you're not. You look lovely. Well, that's your, your idea of it, but Actually, he's going to kill me. How are you? How are you? Yeah, good, how are you? I parked in Hunstanton. Before meeting everyone, Roy talks to me about the explosion of ill health in the UK and how a medication-first approach in general practice may actually be contributing to the problem. There's been a sort of blindness induced in the way that treatment is discussed and guidelines are written. So doctors are actually pushed in the direction of prescribing 
just because the guidelines say that's what you've got to do. And some of the simple things have been overlooked. I must be made. But we know from fixing our dad that the concepts of diet and exercise can often lack the specific details to make them successful. It's quite high, isn't it? We reversed our dad's diabetes by rapidly reducing his weight and keeping it there. Pasta and salad, that's quite high. It's about the highest it's been. Specifically, we saw that sugar and starches were spiking his blood sugar. So we simply cut out those foods. <laughs> the effects were incredible. We found that, that what that diet did was it, it cleared not only the fat, but it cleared the mind in a way. You know, for, for Dad, it was sort of, he was clearer thinking. The whole thing was yeah. just more possible. It, it is really interesting. And I'm sure there's a big story behind this matter of feeling better, feeling cheerful, yeah. fe thinking yeah. more clearly. Yeah. Because the brain does behave a bit differently when it's b burning a bit more of the ketones. Ketones are just natural byproducts of the body breaking down fat for energy. And this will be really critical to the success of our four fixes. You're still okay there? Yes, thank you. Lovely. Just a moment or so before your next gun stop. When we cut out processed foods and foods high in sugar and starch, our body starts to use fat for energy, just as it does each night when we're asleep and not eating. Today is our starting point. We're going to find out what life has done to them so far and how far they truly are from that 100 mile cycle ride. First of all, they'll be going through Roy's MRI scanner, which according to Roy, will give a really good indication of their metabolic health. The scanner has an upper weight limit of 158 kilos. Aidy has made efforts to reduce his weight prior to this visit and is hopeful that he can be scanned. What? No. It was 235 on the 190, it's very strange. It says 45 kilos down. But I'm gutted. Aidy is very disappointed, and Roy acknowledges the additional challenge he faces in losing weight and reversing his diabetes. Someone who's eaten themselves to a weight of 40 stone, that's a huge excess, clearly has got an enormous capacity for food and has got an enormous drive to eat. So he will find this uh, more of a challenge just because we're all individuals. With AD too heavy for the scanner, first up is Maureen, who has a particular concern about her weight and its impact on the risk of the cancer coming back. For me, and part of the reason for actually joining in this process is, is the cancer hid in the body somewhere? And is the cancer actually linked to weight? And at the moment, I don't know, but my biggest fear in life is that cancer returning. And cancers are one of the risk factors uh, relating to obesity. OK. And although it's not been absolutely tied down, I see this as a very, very simple thing because basically the fatter someone is, the more resistant to insulin they are. Insulin levels rise, but insulin doesn't just control glucose. Insulin has lots of other effects, maintains muscle mass, but also it stimulates growth. Mm. And if you've got a tumour that's there, it won't be started by the insulin, but it will be promoted by the insulin. Right. And the table's just going to move again very slightly now before... So in losing weight, there are direct and tangible benefits for Maureen not just improving general health, but in possibly preventing cancer from taking hold in the future. Liver fat is a really important measurement, 14%. Let's get it down to less than five. OK. It gives me logic, and, I'm, and if there is logic, I can apply that logic. <laughs> in going through the scanner and speaking to Roy, Cherry also hopes to learn more about how she can prevent diabetes for the future. Why would you do that to yourself? And that's what I'm doing, and I need help in getting reprogrammed to sort of go, yeah, you, you can change this girl. You can, you can make your life better. Let me just start off with here. This is the, the tummy. So that's a fat layer over your tummy. So this is this. Yes, that's, that's that, that, exactly. Now, the liver fat level of normal is 5%. But down into the darker blue, it's distinctly normal. And just look at your nice liver. <laughs> so that's beautifully blue, oh, that's and in fact, your average liver fat's 2.3%. So that's really good 
uh, we're looking at 10% or less risk of type 2 diabetes into the next foreseeable future. So you're handling the fat quite well. That was a massive fear of today. Mm. That right. was a real well, big fear. So There's nothing to be afraid of. And everything's good news. Yeah. So going back to this... Oh, quite a bit. <laughs> a bit. That was what... This is just great news because this clever body of yours is doing all the right things. So, so things aren't as bad as they could be for Cherry, but this is a real tipping point for her health. Her body's cope well with her lifestyle to date, and now she has a real chance to prevent any long-term health issues from taking hold. But she knows she has to take decisive action from today. Craig, on the other hand, is looking for an answer to what seemed like a lifelong problem. As he gets ready for the scanner, Craig considers how rapidly type 2 diabetes took hold. Pre-40, I was diagnosed, I was probably about 38. It started off as diet controlled, and then suddenly my blood sugars went up quite dramatically, and it was along the lines of, well, we're going to have to put you on medication now. You've only had your diabetes for three years or so. I'd like you to look on this as very much a matter of, OK, fix it. Yeah. Get the weight down. The important thing is a change, yes. and that's what we want to achieve. We're just talking about bringing you down to a level where you'll be healthy and even better, where you feel better. And also, you'll be able to do the London ride just as though it was nothing. <laughs> If you were to be really successful at this and achieve maximally, it's... That's the figure I want. ...theoretically possible for you to lose approximately 48 kilograms in four months. 150 kilograms would bring you down to a svelte 23 and a half stone. Well, that sounds nice, doesn't it? Just seeing my image on that scan, and seeing just the red outline of me. And then just looking at that and thinking, how the hell have I got to this point? This is a real wake-up call that, you know, you can go down a different path. That's as simple as that. It's a tough path, but you can do this. Seeing the graphic impact of their diet and lifestyle on their organs made our fixies think more deeply about their relationship with food. Why did I find comfort in food? We're a big sweet family, we always have been. Um, I'll hold my hands up, I mean, if my parents were sitting here now, they'd start laughing because, you know, when I lived in the Midlands, our biggest thing on a Sunday afternoon, we'd all meet up at the candy stalls, and I'd meet my uncles, I'd meet everybody there, we'd all be there buying the sweets. My mother, absolutely fantastic cook, and as I say, on the farm, fantastic food, um, all home produced, all home grown. Your mum told me you used to have two dinners because she would go out to work and your nan would have you after school. This, I presume, is when your parents were together. And then you'd get home and your mum would be upset because she'd done something. And so then you, because you loved them both, would eat both of these dinners because you didn't want to upset either of them and say that you didn't want Whichever, and you used to, to make them happy, you used to eat both. <laughs> Food's been a reward. It's been, I've had a hard day, I'll have some this, or I'll have a glass of wine, or I'll do, you, you know, everything has been a reward. And I think I need to get a more mindful, I need to reward myself in a different way, you know, like I say, be kinder to myself. As you can see, we're in complete and utter disarray. Um, the reason being, I am going through the cupboards. We are throwing out these things. We found with Dad that cutting out processed foods is the first important step. Now it's 289. It was 288. It's gone up by one gram. But we also learned that it's important to keep insulin levels low 
which means cutting down heavily on sugar and starchy foods. I decided I am starting the following day. I am now on a mission and I am going to do this. After ditching the processed foods, the fixies need to get used to their new way of eating and develop new food habits over the next few weeks. This leads to some initial shocks for Craig. No bloody porridge. So porridge in the coconut porridge. I thought it was going to be. He was hoping he was going to get 200 grams of porridge oats. Porridge in oats with coconut. <laughs> no. Thought that sounded really nice. No. But no. 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 Morning. First breakfast. Mmm. So it doesn't look too bad, does it? I think I've constructed it quite well. I think so. I think mine looks better than yours. Just saying. I'm in a foul mood, though. Are you? Still? Still in a foul mood. Coffee was a big thing today. And then Kate wanted something to eat. And I felt really, really hungry. She asked for a cheese sandwich. She ate part of the cheese sandwich. And then she was going to leave the cheese sandwich. And I broke. As Craig struggles to cut out his usual foods, Cherry is finding that her environment at work is her greatest challenge. If you're in here, you can do your emails and things like that. But then, once you've done those, and you've caught up with the work that you do need to do, it can be quite difficult. This is the only sustenance that we have. <laughs> Snack machine and the water cooler. That's all that we have, because we have no canteen anymore. About 4 o'clock in the morning, you start to feel cold, whether that's... I, I don't know if there's any scientific explanation for it. So you know that your body's going through something, so you reward yourself. What have we got to eat? Bag of crisps, chocolate bar. That's all you've got, unless you've prepared yourself and brought something in. To help Cherry succeed, her husband Ned is taking on more of a role in the kitchen. Cherry, Cherry's the, the chef in the house. She's, a, right. she, she, she's really, in the last two or three years, we've really started to enjoy cooking. I think it's got a lot more fashion, really. Yeah. In the same way, Craig's wife Rachel is helping him to stay on track and things are beginning to look up. And he's very impressed so far. Really nice. Mackerel is lovely. Mm -mm -mm. And the cauliflower with a tiny bit of feta, chopped tomatoes and basil reminds me of bruschetta. Oh, you're posh. We're feeling really positive about it because we're, our moods have improved and our clothes are all too big, so that's brilliant. This is where my belt is now. Still too loose. Jeans, can't keep them up. So, I'm going to bodge some more holes in my belt. But I ain't paying for new clothes yet. With some early weight loss and their moods improving, it's time to dig out the bikes. My hyper tidy going. Right. No, you go first. Maureen and her husband Ian will train around Ian's work commitments. But the cold weather is a challenge, making training very difficult some days. And with only a few months to that 100 mile ride, this is a concern because Maureen will need as much time on the bike as possible if she's going to make it. By the time the project gets going, we should be <laughs> in good warm conditions, <laughs> rather than this freezing cold mm. and foggy days. Give me your hands, and I'll rub your hands together. Is that better? <laughs> I know, but it is freezing, and it's colder this evening than it was this well, morning. Worse than yesterday. Where's your other one? No, it's the other ones in my pocket. Do you want to borrow my that. gloves to no, get home? Okay. We'll manage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're Yorkshire. The official Ride London training plan will begin with 16 weeks to go. But in the meantime, our fixies want to get a head start. Having lost around two stone already, Aidy is becoming confident on his bike. His friend Michael is taking him out on regular training rides. Together, they tackle hills and set themselves goals. Craig's anxiety means he finds it difficult to leave the house before he feels completely prepared for the road. When I get up in the morning, if I'm going to get on the bike, I go through loads of doubts. I just get really anxious. 
I've got that, which is a heart rate monitor. I can actually watch my heart rate. You can analyse the heart rate and everything on Strava, which is what I do. The insert part, yeah. separate to the glasses, it doesn't automatically come with them. That bit clips into the nose piece. When you put them on, yeah. do you know what I mean? I can see perfectly well yeah. Yeah. through it, and, I, yeah. and you can't actually see the outline. No, yeah. if, I, like, if I take my glasses off and I do that, I can't read that without it being blurred. Despite his anxieties, Craig has some local friends who begin to cycle with him more regularly. With their help, he quickly makes progress to 30 miles. You right, Mike? And with Ned's help, Cherry's also overcome a reluctance to get started. A ride. Um, sun's come out for me, which is quite nice. If it wasn't for Ned coming with me, I doubt I'd have got myself off the sofa. Um, as much as I want to do this, I think it's dawned on me that the hard work's just started. That's it. How far are we going? <laughs> a million. <laughs> the Cherry and Ned are actually stunned by their increasing energy levels on their new way of eating and the difference this is making on the bike. The energy just seems to be boundless at the minute and I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. Where's the handbrake on your car? There is none, you need not take the handbrake off it, it's all fully automatic. Oh. Being that it's just... Ah, I'm okay. oh, 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 sorry, I thought you were supposed to be going forward. No, backwards, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. In fixing our dad, we created a big board which showed every aspect of his life, exploring how his ill health began and exactly what was keeping him there. Cholesterol, stroke. We identified the barriers, meaning we could set goals with confidence. So with only four months to ride London, we're going to visit our fixies, family and friends to see what the real challenges are. To not only get them over that finish line, but to make a sustained lifestyle change for the future. With that big goal in mind, it's time for the challengers to take an honest look at their progress and where the pitfalls might be. Fixing projects aren't just about our health. They're often about things that only those close to us really know. We started with history, so what makes Craig? So our business went into liquidation in 2010. So how did it impact you at that time? Oh, it was awful. It was really tough because we'd right. thrown everything into it. And, yeah. it. and Doug was three and Charlie was five, so they were only little. Somewhere around here is the type 2 diagnosis. But on top of this, there's another significant event that has impacted Craig's well-being. His mum only died 16 months ago. He got in the car to go up because they said, you need to contact the family, and he missed her dying, which was very sad. I don't think he's over that yet. Cherry's always been known as someone who loves to have fun, and she enjoys a great social life. Ned fears other people's perceptions of what is a normal lifestyle could still hinder Cherry's progress. Being involved in this process is it opens your eyes to things that you probably never considered before because everybody just goes along with a gradual drift. And if you're involved in that gradual drift, you, you cease to notice the changes. But then if your focus is brought back to something and say, compare this with then, yeah. you know, look at that, what happened there? Right, so 80's past, yep. it's pies. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't want any close friends, so which is where we've sort of started up something which is quite sort of unique in that way. So it has changed him entirely. Is it going to become all or nothing? But he enjoys going fast on the bike. It's very much of today. He won't look into the future more. We sometimes feel powerless when it comes to our health, but there's power in a project, in giving it a name, in committing to it in knowing someone cared enough to start it in the first place. And here's Sherry. Come out and have a look at this then, my love. Everything that you put on there is true. It's a bit overwhelming, really, because it's a lot bigger than us. A lot bigger. So that low self-esteem there, all of this has a massive effect on that. Yeah. The effect that it's having on my, on my stress is the fear of the unknown. 
That was it, that was my life. You've got it bang on and it was pretty selfish really. And the risk bit is I just love a risk. That's how I look at your, you're looking at. What worries me is, is if something goes wrong here, do we go back into here? No, no, that's gone. That's got, we've got to do that. Yeah. We've got to. For me, it is uh, thinking of this as the start of a process, rather than, wait a minute, that 100 miles is the end of it. Maureen isn't the only one seeing the longer-term opportunity. Understanding how their health has restricted their lives, the others also see a chance to do things they could never have contemplated. And there's so much in the last 14 years that I haven't done, yeah. and I've wanted to do it, and now I just want to do everything. Uh, and I was never, ever the best, you know, the best, uh, the best horseman, but, I mean, how fantastic to go off and actually... and then compete or do something, you know, when the weight's gone. Rach and Kate are already on the trampolines in a toddler session. I'm not actually allowed on the trampolines because there's a weight limit. So, um, yeah, everybody else has had a go, but I haven't. We've done trampolines a couple of months, When, When I've lost the weight and when I'm spelt, <laughs> I'll be able to go on the trampolines. I've always wanted to try wing walking, but there's a, there's a weight limit. It's five and a half stone. Yeah. That is one thing that just highlights that her lifestyle, her condition, which if you don't do something about it and if you don't improve it, it's never going to happen. Illness can restrict us. It can also be isolating. So this weekend, we're bringing the group together in Scotland to share their experiences and prepare for the next physical step. OK, so we've now got another uh, arrival time, 4.02pm, about another 50 stops. We should be there about midnight. Where are you, mate? <laughs> First message of the day. Cambridge. <laughs> Lost tons. <laughs> All four had talked about how stress and pressure had impacted their physical health. This would be a chance to learn some relaxation skills, as well as to practice cycling together as a group. Our minds play such a big part in overcoming physical conditions, so we've invited someone who understands this better than most, Shaolin master Shifu Yang. One, follow me, and two, Try and enjoy every day. Don't look at the tomorrow. Look at today. When you have a food, enjoy the taste now. In the life, we all have something which is not what you wanted. The key is you are happy today, you enjoy today, you enjoy now. Change what you can change, ignore that you can't change. Now all positive, happy. I really liked his approach. You know, sort of live the moment and don't be looking at the top of the mountain, look at the little bits on the way up. It's about just picking the little positives. Just going in the bathroom as you're washing your hands, and I thought, oh, you're not doing bad, lass. And it is, that might seem a little vain, but in actual fact, you just sort of go, well, things are changing. I think my moods have changed, but it's all been really positive. Today is day two, and we're introducing cycling coach Paul Buchanan. As founder of Team Blood Glucose, Paul has a unique understanding of the role of exercise in managing blood sugars and insulin. From a blood glucose point of view, what we're looking to do is just get... Not, this isn't about power today. It's not about elevating your heart rate. It's just about being comfortable, getting yourself warm, putting a bit of effort in... Getting your Our challenges have been fitted with glucose monitors so they can learn the impact of food, stress and exercise on their blood sugars. And then we'll talk about what, what food does, what fuel does with insulin on the body when you're exercising. <laughs> There's something about facing the same challenge together that gives us freedom to open up. Our mental health can be as important as our physical health. 
sharing thoughts and fears honestly and openly can really help. What about the depression side of it? Because I know you're on, you're on some I'm still on the tablets. OK. I am still on t I tried coming off them last week. Yeah. But Rachel's mm. like, you can't just come off them. No, you're supposed to. You're supposed to. <laughs> we know Craig always had a very close relationship with his mum and that he has struggled with his mental health. So her sudden death last year has compounded problems for Craig and he's still struggling to accept her death. When I zoomed up from work, they just let me go straight away. I went straight up there, drove up there. And she died while I was on, on the motorway in the car. You know, and, and, and I've never really stopped to think about it. Do you know what I mean? I've got the pictures, I've still got the pictures. Some have popped up on my, on my Facebook feed from six years ago today with a picture of Charlie and my mum. And it's just left a big hole now. Just, I just miss her. One thing I've never really done is discuss with the boys their mum. Whereas I was in a cocoon myself thinking, well, I can't talk about it. I think I should have let them do that. They needed to sort of extreme and ask questions and cry in tears and not be frightened of asking about it, where they have been for me. Looking back now, I've been quite selfish because I didn't let them. Mental health issues in the police are scoffed at. If you went in with a broken leg, everybody would be all over you. But if I went in and said, I'm really feeling it today, I'm a bit stressed, people go, oh, for God's sake, pull yourself together. Treating chronic health conditions in isolation doesn't work. People are much more than the sum of their conditions and their ailing organs. Our physical and mental health are not isolated, but powerfully connected. And our health outcomes depend on that harmony. I realise I've actually been looking down the barrel of a loaded gun and it's not gone off. And I just think I'm so fortunate that that hasn't happened yet. And if I didn't... I still feel now if I don't do something, that gun hasn't gone away. It's just moved off to the side a little bit. When what happened happened, the first question I had to ask was, you know, what actually caused, you know, caused the death? And they said, well, she broke her neck. And it was just like, do you have this sense of all your life? It was just, I mean, I always knew when I was a kid I was going to die at 36. Well, it, it wasn't quite like that, because at 36, I lost my partner. As the day progresses, we cover some miles and climb some hills together. It's a relatively short ride, but it's not easy for everyone. You're right, Maureen. That 100 miles is still a long way off. But this weekend has been about so much more. What began as a common goal for each of these families has become their collective journey. Hey, go on, Craig. <laughs> you bunch of bastards. This is the day the group came together to build each other up. to help and support each other. I can't believe it. There's been so many years since I've had any of this camaraderie. It's just bloody brilliant. It's amazing, isn't it? isn't it? As we head back to the house, we're all in good spirits. But in this moment, we have no idea what's coming next, or that the day is about to take a horrible turn. Eddie's fall is severe, but he's had a lucky escape. After a full check over, he's discharged from hospital with cuts and bruises. <laughs> everything I do, I have to be competitive. You know, the faster you know, everything was going, I just wanted to go faster. And I knew we were shifting. You know, because we'd, I mean, it, you know, I knew we were going fast. And yes, Michael was saying, just, no, 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 I'm going to, because I push it to the limit. And that's, that's the reason in my life I've had so many 
things happen because I just push it to the limit. I want to stand out so people are going, blimey. And that's what I want. And it, whether, that might not be important to other people. And people say it doesn't matter what people think. Well, to me, it does. And if I do something, um, I've got to be the best at it. Whilst our weekend hasn't panned out the way we hoped, it has cemented bonds in a way we hadn't anticipated. <laughs> I was very relieved to see Eddie coming in last night. I actually felt quite sick when I saw him on the road. And I had to get back on the bike, because if I hadn't got on that bike then, I don't think I would have again. It's as though the whole the whole life has changed. I've come out of one and all of a sudden met this wonderful blooming, you know, this group of people that we're working with. It's just, I can't describe it, Anthony. I don't know how to describe it. We are so lucky, you know, that you guys have done this. You know, I really want it. Uh, and I don't care what anybody says, I'm going to do it. Say cheese! Thank cheese! You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, Scott. Thank you. Goodbye, Scott. You know, it's <laughs> Hill cycling is the biggest challenge on Ride London. So Craig is focusing his remaining training time on practicing hill climbs. We just done a hill that's 10.8%. I used the granny cog all the way. Cherry's training hard between work shifts and she's gradually finding the hills easier. I didn't used to be able to stand up. Um, I used to get really nervous about standing up in it but I'm getting there. Yesterday, we uh, came out and we did a road very similar to this. It's like, yeah, just one more hill, just one more hill. And then there was another one. He said, oh, I thought it was the last one. So, but it's that just positive encouragement. It's great. They now have just six weeks until the big ride. So we're taking our challenges to visit those notorious hills, to recce the toughest parts of the Ride London route. The Surrey section has three big climbs, Newlands Hill, Leith Hill, and Box Hill. The idea today is to take some of the fear out of these climbs before the day itself, and for the challengers and the support riders to help and encourage each other. Come on, big smile, big smile. If I hadn't had Ned talking at me, I don't think I'd have got up it. With Michael unable to attend the day, and Aidy determined to make it up Leith Hill in practice, Ned demonstrates some true heroics to give him the best shot possible. I won't walk. I don't want to walk. I, I just, I don't mind going up in stages. I'm not pushing you off, dude. Just come out of that curve. Oh, you're fine. Come out, come out. Leaving his own bike at the foot of the hill, Ned helps Aidy break the climb into manageable stages. Yeah, yeah that's remember, so you don't stop. <laughs> Call it. Go on, go. Go. Here we go, then, dude. Literally, it went sort of like that, and then went yeah. <laughs> like that. And it was like, ooh. It's a success. Always little successes. It's about composure. This is a big wake-up call, which is good. I'm glad we did it. We if go. I'd have turned up on the day to see this, I think it would. I'd, I'd have done it. But wow! Oh, I was calling you. I was calling. Come on! Come on. <laughs> Don't. Awesome, mate. Awesome. It Absolutely. wasn't even mine over matter. That was way that was... above me. That it hill. Wasn't, it was. Done it. I did it, but I didn't want to stop. Hold it there. <laughs> you come here, big guy. Go. I'm a fire. Well done, buddy. Oh my God, well done. You well done. Well he pushed me up here. He did. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> no, he pushed me up here. No, he did not. He did. As they enter their final few weeks of training, we're taking everyone back to Newcastle to see how well they've got on. I've stopped worrying about it so much. Um, I just think early days, I could. The, I could have probably done better. You started at 199.7 kilograms. Yep. And you've come all the way down to 173.3. Okay. That's 26, 26.4 kilograms. Right. You must feel very good at this new weight. I get up in the morning full of energy. I'm cycling 40 miles. I'm doing this. There's nothing I can't do. So nick us to the figures. I still want to lose it, obviously, and that's, I'm going to carry on losing as much as I can. I've learned so much from the process, um, but I feel so brilliant. Hello, Roy. You're looking great. Your diabetes is a thing of the past. 
and it will stay in the past, provided you keep your weight level. So this is brilliant news. And of course, with this normalization, you're automatically freed from all the threats to eyesight, to kidney damage, to nerve damage, to foot yeah. damage. So uh, the I've, change I've is... gone from a 52-inch weight to a 42-inch weight. Yeah. The I change mean, is in my just, life size. just phenomenal. I feel I have broken through a wall, and I felt that sort of the cancer was keeping me behind that wall. In terms of the results, you've done enormously well. 18 kilograms, three stone, yeah. just about weight mm. loss. <laughs> in just a few months, Maureen's liver fat has reduced from 14% to under 3.5%. An astounding achievement. Cherry has also lost a huge amount of weight and actually halved her liver fat level. So you've lost three stone, three stone one pound then? Yeah. Mm. Wow. 20% of my body weight. <laughs> Shit. 20% of it is gone. <laughs> this change is just fantastic. And we can even see it in what's going on inside you. Because you started off with a pretty good liver. There was only 2.3% liver fat, and that's healthy. But you, in fact, halved that. It's down to 1.4%. So you're right down at the lean machine, healthy machine sort of range. You just can't believe the difference when yeah, it's just... We gave the, the, the hard figures, like 20%. 20%. When, when I phoned, phoned all the parents and told them, they were just astounded, absolutely astounded with it all. So all four challengers are firmly on the right road. But tomorrow, they have one daunting challenge ahead. A hundred miles of road cycling from the Olympic Park in Stratford out to Surrey and back to the Mall via some five and a half thousand feet of gruelling hill climbing. I'm nervous. I've got, like, feels like someone in my stomach, holding my stomach. And I guess one of the things that I've never really done is physically challenge myself beyond what I know I can do. A huge part of me wanted to say, do you know what, let's just call it a day. I just, I, I, you know, I don't want to do it. And I don't know why. I think it's just a worry about I just want to get to the end. I just want to get to the end. I suffer really bad with anxiety, like really bad. And I worry about little stuff, stupid stuff. I've put this first before everything, before my job, before everything. It's meant so much to me. None of us know where it's going to go, and I don't want it to stop. It isn't going to stop, you know. I know it will be the fear of actually not being able to get back here and not being able to cross that finish line. For our four challengers, even being here today have been hard to imagine a few months ago. They arrived here by understanding their health and tackling the issues head on. The fixing challenge gave them the hope they needed. Today, they're hoping to do something truly remarkable. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> After a relatively flat 40 miles, we've reached our first climb at Newlands Corner. At 1.6 kilometres, this will be the first real physical challenge. Cherry, Craig and Aidy make it to the hub at the top of the hill. With a brief moment to catch their breath, 
They compare notes on the hill they've just climbed. Yeah, it was just murder. Everything hurt. Everything. Remember when we did the Surrey Hills, Newlands made me want to throw up. It hasn't today, so bring it on. Going up a hill isn't, isn't worrying me anymore. You know, that. I think the psychological side of it is the fear of the unknown going up a hill. The team still have 55 miles and the biggest climbs to go, but they're reluctant to leave the hub until they know Maureen is OK. Come on, Maureen! Hey, come on, come on, girl! Come on! Come on, you! You're nearly there! You've done it! <laughs> the bike has broke. Oh, no, where? The thing has come off the back, so I've no pull to pull it up. Yeah. Which was not good. Yeah, it should be. The tow clip has come off. What's that? So my tow clip, so I've nothing to actually pull that off with. There's a mechanic in the hub, there'll be a mechanic station in the hub. If we go in there, we'll get some. Cable tie, cable tie your feet to it. Yeah. It was actually lovely to see you guys when I come up here because I honestly know that I am going to be a long way back, which doesn't bother me, but it was just actually really nice to go. They're here. Collaboration and support have been the crux of the fixing challenge. And our fixies, families and friends have taken to the streets to help them. Having Carl and Claire here, like, I haven't seen them. Nice what? Girls, Must be since uh, Dunk's wedding. Dunk's wedding, wasn't it? That's yeah. what, three years ago? I'm yeah, so, three so years. Proud of three years. Them. Honestly, I am. I think it's fantastic. Tony's just fallen off again. <laughs> That's twice in one day. Yeah. Cherry's now laughing. I'm finding that not very nice. No, it's not very nice. That is your really brother. You're not meant to be laughing at him falling off I've his got, bike. I've got... So with everyone reunited, it's time to head on to Leith Hill. Now, I'm just going to take it really steady. Determined to make it to the top, Cherry is focused on the task in hand as she crosses the halfway mark. Three or four miles to Leith. Leith is the worst. Get Leith out of the way, it's downhill. The rest of the team are close behind and they all know these next few miles will push them to their physical limits. <clears throat> oh, it's tough. I'm just looking at it now, I'm just thinking. Heart rate's coming back down there, so... That's good. 156. Sorry, sorry. Then you get your breath bowed, so have a plot up there, we'll have a walk. It's all right. I'm not walking it. In my eyes, like I've always said, it's not about killing yourself to finish. No. You know what I mean? It's about taking part. And if I have to walk up a couple of hills, I have to walk up a couple of hills. You know? It's on the inside of the council. Well, this is it. How are you feeling? I'll be back to the end now. You're doing brilliant. <laughs> You're doing absolutely brilliant, mate. Come on, Craig, you git. You little bastard. <laughs> I just look at Craig and think, blimey, you know, I mean, the weight he has lost and it's so visible. I mean, I know it's visible with me, but I mean, you know, I've got a lot of further to go, but he's, he's, I look at him and think, crikey, you know, that guy, for me, he stands out. I still worry about stuff while I'm riding, you know, it's still there, you know, but it's one of those situations where you just got to try and put it to the back of your mind and anxiety-wise, I worry like mad, you know. I do. Even, even when I'm riding. Do you think about the next day? Do you, what do you think about? Yeah, yeah. I think about all the stuff in the past as well, you know. The fear of getting home, I guess, has always been there. I'm not quite sure why. I guess it's coming from a big family um, and wanting to remain part of that family. With their last push up Wimbledon Hill at 90 miles and heading for the finish, our challengers know their moment is close. And as they encourage each other to the very end, they know this will also mark a new beginning. Well done, Craig! Just let the camera know I didn't need to stop. Harry was knackered, Steve was knackered, Michael started crying. So, as their friends and loved ones gather along Whitehall and down the Mall, our fixies can begin to take in just what they've endured, overcome and achieved in the last six months. They say it's a matter of time A thousand days and the sun won't shine Before I come back to you And I'll 
Again, the fixing challenge. These people were in poor health. Four people motivated by our dad's story. Now we wonder how many more their stories can inspire. And this is infectious. This is what we need to spread the fact that by changing what you eat, what you put into yourself, that we can actually change lives. We can prevent disease and we can change lives. When we take the time to focus on our health, we can begin to understand. How did we reach this point in our lives? And what do we want for our future? The good times in our lives are not lost. By prioritizing our health within our families and friendships, by setting goals together, understanding there is always hope, not only can we achieve things we'd never thought possible, we can build a stronger connection with the people around us along the way. And as a family, we can say, there is no better fix than that. <laughs> 